Welcome to your Padlet tutorial. This is Padlet. This is one of my most favorite tech tools out there, especially for a classroom with devices. This is such an incredibly flexible tool, and my middle school students do not need email addresses or usernames or passwords to access it. Now, Padlet used to be called Wall Wisher, but now it's called Padlet and the web address is padlet.com p-a-d-l-e-t dot com now let me show you why I love Padlet so much by showing you some of the walls that I have created for my students and then I'll show you how to go about making walls okay so this is an example of a wall that I made for my students this particular wall was for my fourth period um, and this was a wall where they demonstrated mastery about Middle East ethnic groups the Arabs Persians and Kurds in particular and for this one they actually created videos um, using an app called story robe and then they uploaded it from their iPads onto the Padlet wall and as you can see I have a map of ethnic group distribution of the Middle East in the background and so if you click on any of the students um, uploads there you can actually download their video file and watch it or you can click to the next one and the next one and the next one and you can watch them all and then you just click the red X to go back to the main wall let me show you another example on this particular wall I actually had my students just type in paragraphs um, and for this particular one they were explaining the reason for the division between the Sunni Shia and in the background here there I have a map that I've uploaded as the wallpaper for this wall of the distribution of the Sunni and the Shia in the Middle East um, so most of my students type their particular paragraph or paragraphs directly onto the wall but as you can see I did have one student who opted to actually write out his information and he took a picture of it and uploaded his picture so that's an option as well speaking of pictures here's another one where my students did timelines of Islamic religion and they actually did illustrated timelines that they drew in class they took pictures of their timelines and uploaded them to this particular wall and all by the end of the class period so I didn't have to go home with all of these papers um, in my bag to grade them I could just come home and log on to this particular Padlet wall and go ahead and go through all the students uh, work and grade their timelines from home this way digitally this is another example of a wall where the students compared and contrasted three religions in the Middle East and this was actually a differentiated project product wall that we did some of the students decided to do pic collages which is sort of like a, a digital poster if you will so that was one of the options that they had some of them did videos as you can see um, here's another video that some of them did um, a few of them decided to use an app called Skitch where they took photographs of Jerusalem and showed some Christian Jewish and uh, Muslim areas in there identified those here's another video over here and uh, I even had a uh, one group write a, an essay and actually this essay was very very good and this is what they wanted to do so they took a photograph when they were finished and they uploaded that to the Padlet wall so it didn't really matter to me how they wanted to demonstrate their mastery as long as they demonstrated their mastery and understanding here's another sketch down here of this particular standard and then uploaded it to the wall and again I got to come home and grade these by logging on to my Padlet wall and going through um, all digitally so I didn't have to lug any papers home with me uh, this is another example uh, compare and contrast Buddhism and Confucianism which is another one of our standards in seventh grade social studies and for this one um, these two students decided to do um, s'more posters which is another example of a digital poster and these two students decided to use go animate to make um, videos to compare and contrast by the way this lovely picture in the background here this beautiful Venn diagram I got off an app called haiku deck which I'd be more than happy to show you how to use just come ask me 
that's not a problem. So these are just some examples of things that, that you can actually create in Padlet. And these are, you know, all of my different various walls that I have in Padlet. I use it a lot. I love, love, love this tool. So let me show you how you can go about making your own walls using Padlet. So here we are back at Padlet.com. And the first thing that you need to do is um, create an account. So let me log out of my account. Okay, so you're going to actually log in or sign up. So if you don't have an account, you would just click sign up and you would type in your email and type in whatever password you want to use and you'd click sign up. So I already have an account, so I'm going to go ahead and log in. All right, now that I have logged in, if I wanted to look at all of the walls that I already have, I would click on this little icon here. And as you hover over them, they'll tell you what they are. This one logs you out. This one will take you to all of your various walls you've already made. This one will show you your account information. And this little plus sign is where you go to build a new wall. So we're going to click on the plus sign. And this is it. This is our wall. We're actually ready to start posting. All you have to do is double click anywhere on the wall. And you can actually go ahead and post. So you can write something here. And once I click outside, there's my post. And I can kind of move it anywhere on the wall that I want it to go. I can go back in and edit my post if I tap out, click outside of it. Or I could go in and delete my post. But this is my actual live wall. And if I wanted people to post on this wall, this is the web address that I would give uh, to the students or to anybody that I would want to be able to post onto this wall. Um, so let me show you how to kind of modify and personalize this. And we'll just leave this post up here for future reference. So I'm going to actually go over here. And this is kind of my, my tool area over here. So this takes me back to my home page. I can create another new wall. I can go into my account. I can share this wall. I can get more information. I can get help. Now this is where I really need to go. I want to modify this wall. I want to personalize it. So I'm going to click on my little wheel and that opens up this whole toolbox of options for me. So the first option that it gives you is to give a little small image to associate with the wall. So if I choose to pick something here, it'll pop up in the, the corner like that or this one or this one. Or you could add your own, my little soccer person. So we'll just go with the little Padlet icon. And then here's where you're going to type the title of your wall that will show up here. I always like to give it a title so that my students know that they're on the right wall. So I usually start my title off with um, the period because I like to personally separate my walls by period. Now, you guys can do it however you want to. Sometimes you want everybody posting on the same wall. Sometimes you're dividing up all of your kids into different groups for specific standards. Um, so you decide the best um, division um, and, and your title for your own wall. So I'm going to call it fourth period demo wall. And I could type a little description here. So as I'm typing over here, you can actually see that the title shows up here and the description shows up underneath. So you could t title it anything you want and you could type out instructions to the students for what they are supposed to do on the wall here in the description if you want to. Okay, the next option, we're just going to go right down the line here. Your next option here is the wallpaper. So this is actually going to change the background. So right now we sort of have this speckled gray look. And they have a ton of options available um, that Padlet can give you. You could go bamboo or you could go ocean. I like to change my background of my wall every single time that the kids log in to a Padlet wall because I want them to feel like it's a new wall that they haven't been to before. So to me, I like to change my, my backgrounds. One of my most favorite things to do is to actually upload my own wallpaper. And I have a few options for that. So 
how I got here. Let me just go back and show you guys that. Oops. Now, if this ever happens to you, just go right back into your wheel and pull open your options again. We were on wallpaper. So I went into this add my own area. So I'm going to click on that again. I could actually paste a website URL in here if I wanted to. I could upload something or I could take a picture with my camera on my laptop and use that as my background. I'm going to upload a picture. Um, so I selected that option and now I'm going to click here to browse my picture files. So I'll go into my pictures and I'll go down to my, let's go into Africa. What do I have in here? Um, oh, I'll do imperialism in Africa. Okay, so now I see what my image is and I just click submit. Okay, one important thing to note is that if your image happens to be small, it'll just repeat your image all the way across and down. If you were to upload a much larger image, it would just give you one image and um, take up the entire screen with that one image. So as you can see, our little demo post that we first did is still here. All we have done is just personalize the wall and change the way that it looks. Okay, so let's go into layout. And there's a couple of ways that you can allow the students to post on your wall. If you choose freeform, the kids can click anywhere that they want to and put a post anywhere on this wall that they want to put a post. Now, that can become a problem um, if the kids, if there are so many kids posting on the wall at the same time and they're posting literally on top of each other and then they get a little frustrated because their stuff disappears because someone else is posting on top of them. So one way that if, unless I'm having them drag their um, posts under a certain column or in a certain area for a particular assignment, I usually pick the stream option. And what that does is it forcibly puts each post um, directly underneath each other. So what you get is the most recent post. So here's our old post. Let's make another one. The most recent posts go at the top and it pushes the older post down to the bottom. So, you know, consider that. And sometimes you might want to start with freeform and then do stream, especially if um, the kids are posting stuff and then going back to comment on them or vice versa. You might want to do stream and then do freeform if you want them to go back and comment on things later. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and go with stream this time. And notice as we do this, um, all your changes save automatically. Okay. Now let's click into privacy settings. These are very important. Okay, at the top you have 100% totally and completely private. Only you and the people that you add via their email address can access this wall. Now while that's very appealing and that might be good for professional uses, um, that's not really going to work for students. My kids are too young to be able to have an email address so I cannot use that option. Now this option is password protected. So if I really am worried about security, I can tell my students to go to the website of my Padlet wall and require them to enter a password to access the wall. Or if I'm gamifying my class and I only want them to access certain things on this wall after they have been approved or have reached a certain point or have quested to a certain place, then I might type a password in here um, and, and not allow them to proceed unless they have the password. Now we can just do a test password and then over here we have some options that we can change. We can say you can only view the wall, which means all you can do is see what's there. You can't add anything new. You can't edit anything that's there and you can't move things around or change the wall. Can write means you can view the wall and write posts. And I love their little helpful hints here. But you can only edit your own posts, but you can't edit anything anybody else has posted and you can't change the look of the wall. Can moderate is kind of like teacher access. You can view, you can write, you can edit anybody's post. You can approve posts if you're setting um, posts to be approved only before they're posted. And, um, but you cannot change the wall because you're not the owner of the wall. So they wouldn't be able to change the look of it. Okay, now I don't like, oops, let me go back. See, this happens. Going back into my wheel, we were under privacy settings. Okay, I use this sometimes. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to show you how m the majority of my walls are set up. I like the hidden link personally. 
Um, so the wall has a public link, meaning the kids can use the link to go straight to the wall, but the link is hidden from Google and it's hidden from the public areas of Padlet. So nobody can Google um, my particular Padlet title, for instance, and find it unless I share the link with them. Um, now you could make it totally public if you want it to pop up in Google searches, um, but I like to choose the hidden link personally. Now, in this particular area, sometimes I only want the kids to be able to see what's there, but most often I want them to be able to actually write posts, I want them to be able to post things, and I want them to be able to edit their posts. If I go and tell them, listen, this is incorrect, or have you considered adding this or changing that, I want them to be able to go back and edit their post. Or if we're doing peer feedback, I want them to be able to go back and edit their posts based on peer assessment or self-assessment. Um, revise and edit and that kind of thing. But they can't change anything or edit anything that somebody else posted to the wall and they can't change the look at the wall. So I like the can write option. So that's the one that I'm going to, to pick. Now moving on down, if you selected private, here's where you would add people by email. You'd have to actually enter their email address and click add and then they would get an email with a link to the wall. Now if you are really stringent and you really want total control over what's going on on your wall, you can actually click this to moderate posts. Meaning when kids try to post something to your wall, you actually have to approve it before it will appear. I don't really care about this option personally because when my kids are posting to the wall, I typically will have it up on the screen so they can see their posts popping up on the projector screen in live time and I kind of see what's going on and I can run over to my laptop and delete something if I need to so I'm not too worried about this also when I come home and really go through and grade things I can delete anything that I don't want to remain on my wall so typically in most situations I stay with the hidden link and I stay with Ken Wright and now I can click submit and my changes are saved I'm gonna continue on down to notifications if you want to, you can choose to be sent an email once a day letting you know if someone has posted on this particular wall. Now this is a very important one, so let's go into the address. I actually have the option to change this URL, and I don't really like this URL. It's long, it's complicated, my students are probably going to think this J is an I and that this I is a J, so I want to change it to something that's a little bit easier for them. So I'm going to click pick a padlet.com address. You could also pick a domain that you already own, um, like myawesomewall.com. So if you own a domain, you can actually you know, use that for your wall. So I'm just going to pick something. Now here's the thing about picking a wall that you need to be careful of. Once a URL is chosen, you can't ever, 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 ever use it again, right? Because it's in use. So what I like to do is always start out with the year. And then I typically will follow that up with the period number. Um, and then I'll typically add the topic. Um, so, so I said that this is 2013, my fourth period demo wall. And it will tell you over here if that particular one is available. And if it is, you just click pick. Now watch what happens to this crazy uh, URL up here when we click pick, ready? Bam. Now our URL is changed to what we picked for it to be. And there it is. Now, if you still think this is too complicated for your students, never fear. Watch this. I can copy this link and I can go to my QR code generator, which is here, qrcode.kiwa.com. This is my favorite place to make a QR code because they are stable, they work every time, um, and it's free. And what I'm going to do, this is a URL, so I'm going to paste my URL right in here. I'm going to change this to static, and I'm going to click Generate. The only thing Dynamic does is it allows you to track clicks, and we don't care about that. So I'm going to click Generate, and now I have my QR code. So I can actually save image as, and I can save it as my Padlet QR code. Oops. And I can save it right in here. Now I'd probably want to be a little more specific than that uh, when I save it because they all look the same, right? So now what I can do is I can paste this into a Word document and print out a whole bunch of copies or maybe one per table or tape it on the wall somewhere and I can have my kids scan this QR code and go straight to the wall without even having to worry about them typing in this complicated 
um, URL. Now, we have kind of lost our tab here for our Padlet wall, so I'm just going to paste our URL back in here and click Go. And when I do that, we're right back to where we started, and this nice little message pops up here that reminds us to double-click or drag a file to make a post. Again, we're going to go back into our wheel here to continue modifying. So we have our address picked, and the only other option that we have is to delete. So if you decide that this is something you're done with, you never want to see it again, you're done with it, you can actually delete your wall. Okay, so here we are. Um, and this post stretched out. This was our very first post that we made because we changed the, the flow settings. We changed it to stream so that one goes underneath the other. Now, let's say I want to go back to my home page. I would just click on this little origami um, crane up here to my home page. And now I can choose to go to view all of my walls. And when I do that, I can see all of my Padlet walls, including the one we just made. And another option is to just click this plus sign here to create a new wall. But if we wanted to go back into the wall, like if, if at the end of your day when you come home, if you want to go in and grade the students' projects, you would just click on this wall and your wall would pop right open. And if you want to go back to your home page and then go see your walls, you can be right back where you started. So that those are just some examples. Um, some other things that your kids can do, which I think is pretty cool, they can um, record audio recordings and upload those um, to your Padlet wall too. So you can make walls do all kinds of things. Again, it's super flexible. That's why I love it so much. You can make it look however you want it to look. Um, and the kids can upload images, movies, pictures, pic collages, audio clips, um, text, photos, all different kinds of stuff and it's a great way to differentiate for your class it's a great way to assess for mastery of standard and it's fabulous because you don't have to cart home a whole bunch of stuff to grade i hope you found this tutorial helpful let's see you start using padlet with your kids